Right now, state leaders are preparing for the unemployment insurance trust fund to run out if we continue to see such a high rate of unemployment claims. And an update on the number of safer at home violations being issued in the city of Madison. This is News 3 Now at 6. Thanks for joining us as an unprecedented number of unemployment benefit claims continue in Wisconsin. The Department of Workforce Development is releasing hypothetical scenarios on when the benefit trust fund could run out, the earliest being October. Madeline O'Neill explains why the department is reassuring workers that it's just hypothetical and what the state would do to make sure workers continue receiving benefit checks. Well, right now, obviously, there are still a lot of unknowns with this pandemic. Currently, the DWD is receiving more than 300,000 unemployment benefits claims per week. If that high volume continues, the latest projections from DWD show the unemployment trust fund would run out as early as October. DWD Secretary Caleb Frostman stresses that's just a worst case hypothetical with unknown factors like how quickly residents will be able to get back to work, adding that the analysis doesn't account for future tax receipts from employers that pay into the fund. Context, we've paid about $300 million uh, out of the UI trust fund since COVID hit. Uh, at that time, the balance is about $1.9 billion. We're now at $1.8. And so those, those tax receipts are helpful uh, for offsetting those costs. If that money runs out, the DWD can request a loan from the federal government like they did during the Great Recession, which would be interest free until the end of the year. Now we know workers are still having issues getting their questions answered about their unemployment benefits and DWD is still working to get retroactive federal payments of $600 out. Now Frostman says they're in the process of getting a 500 person call center up and running to help workers trying to call and work through those issues. Maddie, thank you. Mm -hmm. 12 more Wisconsinites have died due to complications from COVID-19. That makes a total of 374 deaths in the state. Health officials confirm more than 9,300 positive cases. 350 of those were reported today. Today's percentage of cases that were positive is at 5.7%. That is down from yesterday's 8%. You can see from the orange dotted line, we are starting to see a downward trend in the percentage of cases that are positive, but that trend needs to continue for 14 consecutive days in order to meet the governor's main Badger bounce back criteria. UW System President Ray Cross is ordering campuses to identify programs worthy of preservation as the economic fallout from the pandemic deepens. System officials will determine which courses stay, which ones go. Campuses should be ready to move forward with scaled down course catalogs by the fall of 2021. Cross also warning them to brace for layoffs. He wants to consolidate IT and human resource operations by January 2022. Too. Students looking to enroll in most UW system schools won't have to submit ACT or SAT scores for the next two school years. Board of Regents approved that plan today, scrapping test score requirements to all system schools except UW-Madison. The flagship campus is the only school that mandates test scores like that, and every other campus submissions are simply voluntary. Since testing agencies are canceling appointments during the pandemic, system officials say dropping the requirement will allow applicants to move ahead without penalty. We are still waiting to hear what the state Supreme Court will decide on the safer at home order. But in the meantime, lawmakers are sharing their ideas. Republicans in the state are pushing for a regional reopening, but they have not put forward a formal proposal. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss said there shouldn't be a Republican plan and a Democratic plan, but a Wisconsin plan. We spoke with the new Senate Minority Leader today, and she said having the competing plans would make it easier to work together and compromise. There is a logical way to do this, and we don't have to automatically assume that we're gonna butt heads. Let, let's just figure out that we, we want everybody to be healthy and we want everybody to get back to work. Senator Buley said she doesn't like a regional approach because she said it would not be fair, but she said she would like an approach that looked at each industry, which is similar to the plan put forward by Wisconsin manufacturers and commerce. The city of Madison has issued six citations and 75 warning letters to businesses and individuals who are not in compliance with the safer at home order. Our Gabriella Becerra joins us live to explain what it means to receive one of those letters. Gabby? Charlotte, this letter is an example of what the city's attorney's office would send to somebody who was not complying with the safer at home order, or in other words, the last warning before possibly facing hefty fines. 
I was informed by the Madison Police Department that on May 6, 2020 at 1117 p.m., you violated Governor Evers emergency order number 12. That's an example of a warning letter to an individual who hosted a gathering. A lot of people are under the misunderstanding that if they have less than 10 people in their house that they could have gatherings, but it's pretty clear from the order that there's no number of individuals can be in your house if they don't reside in your house. Public health attorney Marcy Polson issues the letters as a warning to offenders after police disperse the gatherings. But if they can't be dispersed, there's other consequences. They have parties. You could get a citation. You could get arrested. Um, we could do what's called as a long form complaint in our office where we prosecute it without writing a ticket. And for that, it carries a penalty of $1,000 per count. Each person at that gathering could be a separate count, meaning that with a group of 10 people, the host could face charges of up to $10,000. Businesses, it's a lot about am I essential, am I not essential? Four of the warnings have been issued to businesses, which Paulson says are usually worked out after email communication. But regardless of the offender, Paulson says the first step is always education. The goal is compliance. It's not to punish people. I mean, the goal of this order is to keep people safe and to stop the spread of the disease use not to impose 200, 500, the thousand dollar penalties. That's never been the goal of anyone. It's been the suppression of the disease. After the statewide order ends, Paulson says it's likely that individual counties will look at what orders are needed in their area. Charlotte? Gabby, thank you. Tonight, the Dane County Board will meet virtually to discuss assistance for residents and businesses during the pandemic. Dane County was provided $95 million through the Federal CARES Act. The board will consider providing an additional $10.5 million for a recently established small business assistance grant through Dane by Local. There's also a resolution to provide $1 million per month to Second Harvest Food Bank in May, June, and July to purchase food and distribute it to local food pantries. UW Health says its cancer care and organ transplantation fields are working hard to make sure patients are safe. All organ donors, whether they're a living kidney donor or a deceased donor, undergo testing for things like hepatitis and HIV, and now COVID-19 has been added to that list. They take this swab test, but also get a chest x-ray and CT scan to make sure they're negative. If someone does pass away from COVID-19, they are unable to donate organs. Through the challenges of the pandemic, UW Health does have some happy stories to share as well. Just a few weeks ago, uh, there was a, a call to action for a uh, looking family was looking for a living donor for their child who urgently needed to be transplanted. And we had over 250 uh, local people come forward in a scary time in the middle of a pandemic, um, willing to be tested and evaluated to potentially be a donor for this child. Um, so I'm happy to report that he, he did get transplanted and uh, is doing well. Patients in transplant and cancer units are at heightened risk for COVID-19 and must work with providers to determine the timing and appropriate care during the pandemic response. That may include phone or video visits when possible. Prepare for a drop in temperatures. Let's check your first worn forecast with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalta. Gary. The next couple of nights are going to be very cold with low temperatures in the upper 20s and lower 30s and the possibility for widespread frost and possibly freezing conditions. Freeze warning is in effect until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning for areas north of Dane County and a freeze watch is in effect for all of southern Wisconsin for tomorrow night from midnight until 8 a.m. Saturday morning. As we look at visible cloud track, we've had a few clouds come in this afternoon, but those clouds will, uh, will thin out pretty quickly. The thicker clouds are staying to our south and west, the clouds that could keep our temperatures up at night. And you can see some showers across western Iowa, but those are going to stay south of us. Right now, temperatures are still in the low 60s in Madison, upper 50s to the north, and only in the 40s closer to Lake Michigan. Those temperatures will drop off pretty rapidly, and by tomorrow morning, be down to around freezing in Madison and below freezing north of town where a hard freeze is possible. Look for a low of about 32 by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's high temperature only reaching 47 with a brisk northerly wind and even colder weather is expected for tomorrow night. I'll have more details on weather in a few minutes. Developing tonight, we are learning cigarette butts caused the West Madison apartment fire that displaced more than 70 residents. This fire happened about three weeks ago on Muirfield Road. The Madison Fire Investigation Team ruled the cause accidental after finding cigarette butts had been discarded in a terracotta planter pot on a balcony that eventually ignited. The fire spread rapidly because of high winds and other materials that were being stored on the balcony. Damages were estimated to be at $750,000 
$1,000. The Red Cross has been assisting displaced residents. The Red Cross is also helping up to 70 residents who were displaced from a fire in Walworth County this morning. At one point, 20 departments were at the scene in East Troy. There were no injuries. Investigators have not said what may have caused that fire. New at 6, Sauk County Sheriff's Office says a man was killed this morning in a tractor accident. It happened about 11 on County Road W. That's in the town of Greenfield. Officials say a 59-year-old Baraboo man was on a tractor when he struck a decorative overhead beam. That beam then fell on top of him and the tractor. The man pronounced dead at the scene. His name has not yet been released. Next at 6, a group in Wanakee wants to make graduating seniors feel special. The idea is to hang up banners around downtown, but the Village Code is presenting some issues. We'll explain next. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. Don't miss Customer Appreciation Days this Friday and Saturday at Hy-Vee. Get $10 off when you spend $150 and use your Hy-Vee Fuel Saver Plus Perks card. That's $10 off when you spend $150 and use your card this Friday and Saturday only at Hy-Vee. We here at Brothers Maine wanted to check in with everyone in the light of the COVID-19 epidemic. We're going to do everything we can here at our store to make sure everything's clean, disinfected, and ready for customers to come in and shop with us. Not only can we come to your house and set up the products as we normally would, but we're also going to be offering a free drop-off service in Dane and Rock County. There's nothing more important to our company than making sure that our employees and our customers are safe and healthy. Here at Weedman Lawn Care, we believe that your lawn should be a place where memories are made, a source of pride, relaxation, and fun for the whole family. That's why we proudly offer a child and pet friendly program so you can enjoy a healthier, greener, weed-free lawn without sacrificing peace of mind. Our program offers effective, targeted weed control, and our golf course quality fertilizer creates a beautiful outdoor space. Don't your kids and grandkids deserve a Weedman lawn? Trust the lawn care experts. Trust Weedman. Ah, ah! Staying in touch has never been more important. So U.S. Cellular has extended its plan to waive data overage charges by two more months. Now through July 31st, no matter what plan you're on, you'll have the smartphone data you need and not be charged for any overages. That way, you can work from home, check the latest headlines, and stay in touch with family and friends without worrying about your bill. So even if you have to be apart, you can stay in touch. U.S. Cellular. Don't miss Customer Appreciation Days this Friday and Saturday at Hy-Vee. Get $10 off when you spend $150 and use your Hy-Vee Fuel Saver Plus Perks card. That's $10 off when you spend $150 and use your card this Friday and Saturday only at Hy-Vee. The Madison School District's Black Excellence Coalition and Umoja Magazine are introducing the Malele Art Scholar Program in honor of the late Malele Chikasa Anana. The program combines four workshops with writing and visual arts along with a youth edition of the magazine. The project will highlight stories and experiences of youth during the pandemic. Workshops are for 6th through 12th graders, but Umoja Magazine encourages all youth to submit work to be considered for the magazine. We have information on how to submit your work on channel3000.com. We told you a few weeks ago about the Subs for Scrubs effort to feed employees on the front lines at UW Hospital. Well, that effort is still going strong, and today, during Nurses Appreciation Week, Subs for Scrubs is feeding everyone at UW Hospital's University Avenue campus. That is 3,000 meals being donated by the Subway shop near the hospital, all with the help of community donations. For five bucks, we provide a meal. It's a chip and a sandwich to search for subs for scrubs. Or they can stop into any of my uh, restaurants, primarily here, University Avenue, make a donation, uh, and we'll, we'll get it out to some people in the front lines. He says it's been an overwhelming experience to see the community rallying together to support this effort. In addition to hospital employees, Subs for Scrubs has donated meals to workers at Mendota Mental Health Institute, grocery stores, assisted living facilities, and first responders. Canceled graduations have left hundreds of graduating seniors incredibly disappointed, but many of you have come together to honor seniors in your own way, and the village of Wanakee has its own plans in mind too. But as Jamie Perez explains, they might have to jump through some legal hoops to honor their graduates. 
This pandemic has presented us with many unique circumstances. For graduating seniors, they're experiencing something no one else has gone through before. I was so excited to go through the process of like buying the dress and getting to walk on the stage and having people cheer for me. Sydney Schmidt is a graduating senior at Wanakee Community High School. She and the other 340 graduates won't get to walk across the stage like they had hoped. But it's just like this little village with a big heart to step up in these moments. And that's exactly what Tara Swalf did. I think the community itself has been trying to find something to do to honor the seniors. Swalf came up with an idea to hang banners on the streetlights with the senior photos on them down Main Street. But there's a problem. Main Street is a state highway, and Village Code doesn't allow any non-directional or non-government owned signs on it, unless there's a unique circumstance. What well, the Village Board told us at their meeting, at their last meeting, was that they unanimously support and want to see us do whatever we can as a village uh, to pave the way for this project to occur. For seniors like Schmidt, this is a pretty unique enough circumstance. It'd be really cool to see my classmates and I up in the community because it makes us feel supported and it makes us feel better about a situation that you can't really fix. And Suave wouldn't mind seeing her own son's face up there too. Yeah, well, I see a lot of his face lately because we're at home together, which he loves. Um, but it will be great to see the entire class up there together. I think it'll be great for the community. The village attorney is working on a resolution to make this plan happen. And the village board will decide later this month if this qualifies as something unique enough to make an exception. In Wanakee. I think that we just see each, we can't be together, but we just keep reaching out to be honoring each other and supporting each other, and it's getting us through these times. Jamie Perez, News 3 Now. And the village board will hear a draft of the resolution to hang those banners on May 11th. They hope to have a final approval by May 18th. We'll be right back. In these uncertain times, it has never been more important to maintain a clean home or business. We are prepared to get your space back to clean and healthy again. We've added a new EPA-registered cleaner that disinfects hard surfaces and deep cleans carpet, rugs, and upholstery. Remember, we disinfect our equipment after every job and disinfect our vehicles daily. We believe in doing things the right way. That's why we've been your trusted partner in clean for over seven years. Cadet dealer has genuine parts, accessories, trained service technicians, and the widest selection of innovative Cub Cadet products. We're here for you whenever you need us. With expert service and support to keep your equipment running at peak performance for years to come. And with great deals available, there's never been a better time to buy at your local dealership. To find the dealer near you, visit CubCadetDealers.com. From our family to yours, we want to encourage you to keep going. Keep protecting what's most important. Keep hopeful in the face of all this. Keep believing. Keep being strong. Keep supporting the people on the front line. Keep staying together while staying apart. Keep being fearless. And most of all, keep dreaming. American Family Insurance is mailing our personal auto insurance customers a premium relief payment to help them keep going. We'll keep being here when you need us.
Five days in the forecast now for tonight and uh, tomorrow morning, as well as Friday night and Saturday morning. For tonight, a widespread frost is likely with temperatures around freezing in Madison and maybe into the upper 20s for areas north of Madison where a hard freeze might be a little bit more likely. And then for tomorrow night and Saturday morning, widespread frost is expected with temperatures in the upper 20s through most of southern Wisconsin. Uh, so these are forecast temperatures early by Friday morning, uh, upper 20s to lower 30s. But as we head into Saturday morning, perhaps even a couple of degrees colder, generally upper 20s to around 30 degrees, that could be enough for a widespread freeze across all of southern Wisconsin. Very chilly weather is expected for tomorrow with high temperatures only in the upper 40s and it'll be cold with frost and or freeze conditions for tonight and tomorrow night as well. But below normal temperatures will continue through Wednesday of next week. There also could be some chances for frost Monday morning, Tuesday morning and even Wednesday morning before temperatures start to turn the corner and we see at or slightly above normal temperatures toward the end of next week. Right now, temperatures are in the upper 40s in northern Wisconsin, generally 50s elsewhere, also 40s near Lake Michigan, around 60 uh, south and west of Madison. But there's actually a cold front that will start dropping those temperatures uh, as the cool air comes in from the north and east. So that lake breeze will start to get enhanced by northeasterly winds, and that will really start the cool down. You can see upper level winds from the west northwest right now, but notice the northerly winds coming right out of central Canada and funneling into the upper Midwest. That's keeping our temperatures cold, but it also will push these showers down to the south. So we'll get a few clouds this evening. Look for skies to turn clear overnight with lighter winds by morning. That will drop those temperatures pretty quickly. Here's the cold front I was talking about. Notice that lake breeze as winds become northeasterly closer to the lake. Some of that cooling air could move inland as well and drop temperatures pretty quickly over the next few hours. As we look at temperatures, again, uh, the northern part of the Midwest right now, temperatures in the 40s, 50s, and then 30s. Once you get uh, north of the Great Lakes, there's even some patchy snow showers uh, north of Lake Superior and north of Lake Huron to the south and west temperatures are cool, but you really don't see any warm air until you get down into parts of uh, southwestern uh, Kansas. On future track, you can see those skies clearing out overnight. Tomorrow, those northerly winds kicking in. That'll drop temperatures to the upper 40s for highs. Clear skies, lighter winds for tomorrow night. Those temperatures fall into the upper 20s. Saturday, we'll see a fair amount of sunshine with highs in the middle 50s. Some clouds will move in for Saturday night into Sunday. I think the best chances of showers will be to our south and west. Can't rule out a stray shower Saturday night into uh, the day on Sunday, but highs on Sunday only topping out right around 50 degrees. So our forecast calls for a freeze warning north of Dane County until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, a, a freeze watch for all of southern Wisconsin. Look for an overnight low temperature or, uh, of about 32 for tonight. High tomorrow, 47 with partly sunny skies. On future track, you can see those temperatures tumbling overnight to the lower 30s. Highs tomorrow only in the upper 40s. Tomorrow night, down into the upper 20s. And then look for high temperatures in the mid-50s on Saturday. 7 to 10 day forecast. Temperatures start to improve the middle of next week. By the end of next week, high temperatures in the lower 70s by next weekend with some shower and thunderstorm chances just before then. And coming up in sports, Jonathan Taylor waiting to hit the practice field. All the Colts rookie running back says he's preparing for the NFL season. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now first worn weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Yeah, I'm a professional remodeler and I go to nuns. Why? Well, my clients love them because they have all those snazzy looking countertops. You know, like beautiful marble countertops, stunning quartz slabs, you name it. To be honest, I don't see what the big deal is. I mean, who needs all that glitz and glamour from a counter? But my clients love those snazzy looking countertops. So we go to Nuns. Nuns. Kitchen, bath, and flooring. To our pick and save associates. For the long hours and late nights. For the miles traveled and the shelves restocked. For making a difference in our customers' lives. For doing so much more than your job. Everyone at the Kroger family of brands and our customers say thank you. In a time when daily life feels a bit uncertain, your hard work is keeping America fed. Pick and save. Fresh for every. Wow, that's Ensure Max Protein with high protein and one gram sugar. It's a sit up banana bend at the waist. I'm trying. Keep it up. You'll get there. Whoa! 30 grams of protein and one gram of sugar. Ensure Max Protein. Wisconsin is one of those certain places with certain people. 
to do a certain thing better than anyone else, anywhere. In Wisconsin, we dream in cheese. Look for our badge. It's on everything we make. When you can't dine in, then get it to go and support our restaurants during Madison Magazine's Restaurant Week to Go. Two weeks of fabulous to-go menus you'll love. Visit madisonmagazine.com for details and menus. Restaurant Week to Go, presented by Kesnix. Food service design, equipment, and supplies. I guess there is still cleanup to do. Hi folks, Friday morning, Hattie has her eye on the sky for Mother's Day. She'll have the latest on our weekend forecast. And seniors at UW-Madison are getting ready for a unique end to a unique semester. We're going to take a closer look at how they're handling graduation. We'll see you at 4.30. minutes, the Packers will release their schedule for the upcoming season. What we do know, who they're playing and where, we just don't know when yet. Besides their division games, Green Bay will welcome the Falcons, Panthers, Jags, Titans, and Eagles to Lambeau Field and hit the road to face the Colts, Saints, Texans, Bucks, and 49ers. While the schedule is about to be announced, mini camps and training camps are a little up in the air. Players haven't seen the field yet. It's just been all virtual, and that's not ideal if it's your first year in the league. Rookies like Jonathan Taylor haven't gotten reps on the practice field, so to get ready for the season, the former Badger has been hitting the playbook hard. It's a rookie year, and you can't wait to get out there, and then, you know, you're delayed from getting on the field again. I mean, any level, high school, college, anybody would be concerned about not being able to, to go out on the field when it's time, but... I think the biggest thing is everyone's, like I said, everyone's going to have to be ready because, you know, once we get that call, once it's time to, you know, hit that field, guys are going to have to know what's going on and they're going to know what's going on fast. 24-7 Sports ranked college football's 25 best head coaches heading into the 2020 season, and Paul Christ is high on the list. The Badger head coach sits 11th in the rankings, which shouldn't really be a surprise. In five seasons at Wisconsin, he's 52-16. and 16. He's the third highest ranked Big Ten coach behind Penn State's James Franklin and Ohio State's Ryan Day. The Madison Mallards will have to wait a little longer to play ball along with the rest of the Northwoods League due to the COVID-19 concerns. The league's May 26th opening day has been postponed indefinitely. The Mallards were scheduled to open up their season against the Woodchucks. The date has been set for Tiger versus Phil Part 2, and this time they're bringing friends. The match championships for celebrity or for charity, excuse me, is scheduled for Sunday, May 24th, and we'll have Tiger teaming up with Peyton Manning to take on Lefty and Tom Brady. Winner gets bragging rights, while $10 million will be donated to COVID-19 relief. The 18-hole competition will be televised on TBS, TNT, True TV, and Headline News. And the IndyCar Series season will officially fly the green flag on June 6th at Texas Motor Speedway, but with some changes. IndyCar will run a one-day schedule with practice qualifying and race taking all place all at the same day, and their season opener will not have fans in the stands. The IndyCar Series hits Wisconsin on June 21st. So we have things to look forward to. No fans. No so. fans yet, but we can just sit back and watch it at home. Right, that's true. Zach, thank you. All right, let's go to Gary now with a final check of your forecast. Well, we have a freeze warning north of Dane County for tonight and a freeze watch for all of southern Wisconsin for tomorrow night. All right, thanks for joining us for News You're Now at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.